I'm Don Herbert, a career firefighter and Safari Land Communications Technical Specialist for the fire and rescue industry. I'm here to talk about cleaning, maintaining, and inspecting your Safari Land Red Line communications equipment. I'm also going to provide some tips for extending the service life of your gear. At Safari Land, we consider communications to be as important to your safety and survival as any other part of your personal protective equipment. And that's why we've designed, built, and tested our communications equipment to meet the demanding day-to-day -day rigors of our first responders. We want you to get the most out of your equipment. And while nothing short of reliable, clear communications is acceptable, we also want to protect you from contaminants such as viruses, bacteria, bloodborne pathogens, and carcinogens. One of the ways to accomplish this is to conduct post-exposure and periodic cleaning, maintenance, and inspection of your communication gear. Not only are Savari Land Communications equipment designed to be used in the harshest conditions, they are also designed to be easily cleaned and decontaminated. Whether after close interaction with injured or sick persons, exposed to body fluids such as blood, in close proximity to dangerous substances such as street drugs, saturated with water spray, or exposed to particulate matter like dust or carbon. Before performing any cleaning on a primary accessory, disconnect the unit from the portable radio and inspect the connector. If necessary, clean the connector at the radio interface by gently using a dry cotton swab, being careful not to damage the spring pins. For the headset, fire speaker mic, or push-to-talk assembly, debris can be brushed off or vacuumed with a brush tip. For general cleaning, the entire unit can be wiped down with a disinfecting wipe. The unit should be cleaned with an anti-carcinogen wipe, such as fire wipes, whenever worn in a carbon-contaminated environment. A sample fire wipe is included with each purchase as a way to promote cancer prevention. Do not use disinfecting chemical sprays or pressurized air to clean any communications equipment. Our communications equipment are designed to self-drain if exposed to heavy water spray or submerged during use and still operate as advertised. During cleanup, remove the ear seals on the headset and the comfort liner foam. Lay the ear cups face down and allow to drain and dry. The ear seals can be removed by lifting up on the underside of the inner ear seal base, separating from the ear cup. The comfort liner foam can be removed and rinsed in clean water and air dried. At this stage, the components on the inside of the ear cup are visible and should be inspected. Once inspected and completely dried, the comfort liner foam can be inserted and the ear seals gently snap back into place. The battery compartment should be opened and inspected for water intrusion. If water is present, remove the batteries and discard. Allow the compartment to air dry before replacing with new batteries. If the fire speaker mic is subjected to heavy water spray, position face down after use and allow to drain and dry completely before placing back in service. To clean the headset jack on the push to talk or fire speaker mic, Visualize the chamber and attempt to clear any debris before gently cleaning with a dry cotton swab. The easiest way to extend the service life on your communications equipment is by minimizing physical stressors when possible. Equally as important is conducting necessary cleaning and performing routine inspection, identifying early signs of wear which can lead to malfunction. Even though the Red Line FSM is tested for the environmental exposure of structural firefighting operations, we recommend that you follow the widely accepted practice of the radio being worn in a sling holster under the bunker jacket and the head of the FSM exposed through the jacket collar and clipped onto a mic tab. The coiled cable can also be a failure point where the cable is continually overstretched or twisted which can cause breaking of the inner wires or overstressing at the strain relief. Whenever possible, route the cable so that any slack is managed to avoid snags during operation. Communications equipment should be inspected for damage after any hard use, and an operational check should be performed before the system is placed back in service. An operational check should also be performed every time equipment is removed or reattached to the portable radio. Push-to-talk assemblies, as well as the fire speaker mic, are sealed units and should not be opened. If corrosion or other damage is noted during inspection, do not attempt to clean or repair. If service is needed, or if any of our communications gear is not operating as expected, 
It should be sent back to Safireland for inspection and or repairs. Safireland communications equipment is covered by our 12-month limited warranty. Inquiries on returning equipment for service and repairs should be sent to tci.sales at safariland.com. For general questions about any of our Redline products, please email me at don.herbert at safariland.com.